Hey everybody, welcome to That's Cakeable. I'm Janine and I'm back in the studio, feeling much better than I have been the last couple of weeks. Thank you so much for all the amazing get well messages that I received from you guys all around the world. It was very, very humbling. This week I wanted to make something that was happy and positive and cheery because goodness knows we all need that right now. And because of that, I decided to make this cute laughing baby dragon cake and what a treat he was to make. So let's get into the video and I'll show you how it was done. So the first thing I've done to create this cute little lucky dinosaur is I found an image of a dinosaur that I liked online and then I scaled it to the size that I want my cake to be. I made a few copies so that I've got some for reference and some for cutting out, which is what I'm about to do now. So I drew a line around the general image of the head and the body, minus the legs and the ears and the wings, etc. And then I took a pair of scissors and I cut around those lines, separated the head from the body, and now I have a template. Okay, we've done the templates, now it's time to move on to the cake. So for this little guy, I'm using two six inch round cakes. And the cake I'm using for this project, I actually nicked from Liz Merrick of Sugar Geek Show. I'll put a link in the description below where you can find the recipe. I've colored my cake with a pinky purple color cause it's a happy, magical color. I went ahead and split my two six inch round cakes into two layers each. Now because this cake is so dense, there's always that chance of it being a little bit dry. So I added some simple syrup to this cake. I then layered my cake with some chocolate ganache. I went ahead and did that to both of my six inch round cakes. Now because I'm using paper templates to cut out the shapes, I decided to do a poor man's laminate on my templates, just to stop them from getting rubby and dirty and stuff. So all I did was just took some wide cello tape and taped both sides so they were nice and sealed. I then took my template, popped it on top of the cake and cut around it just a little bit wider than the actual template. I like giving myself a little bit of wiggle room. Once I was happy with the initial cut, I went around and cut it to the template size. Next thing to do is to remove the template and start rounding this little guy off. So I just took a small serrated knife and started rounding off the cake. I started by doing all the top section. And then of course, you want it to be quite uniform, so I rounded off the bottom edge also. Once again, I went ahead and did that with both cakes. Once my cakes were cut into shape and rounded off, I gave them both a really quick and light crumb coat with some chocolate ganache. Once that was done, I popped them into the freezer to chill for about 10 minutes. Now that the cakes are chilled, it's time to start building up the details. Now in these crazy times, wasting is not an option. So for that reason, I decided to use cake clay to build up the details. That's right, I used all the scraps that came off the cake as I carved them, put them into a bowl, mixed them with some chocolate ganache, and made it into a cake dough mix. It's basically the same as a cake pop and it tastes delicious. So using my reference picture, I started building up all the little details that I saw on the face. So I built up the forehead and the brow. I built up the cheeks and the mouth area. and of course the little muzzle. Now this part doesn't have to be 100% absolutely essentially perfect, but it's great because it gives us landmarks and room to move when we go in and add the final details later on. The body was a completely different kettle of fish, much more simple than the face. I took my template and just marked out where the center of the belly was so I knew where to put my cake clay. I built up some cake clay around the edges of the belly, leaving that center part open. And then I went back in and added some cake clay in the center, making sure he's got a nice tubby belly. Once 
the details were done on both cakes, it was time to give them another ganache coat. Now you might lose a few of the details doing this part, but don't worry, when we come back later on, we'll be able to fix all that up and make it look wonderful. Now because there's more details, the face was a little more of a challenge to ganache, but I found that the easiest way was giving it an initial coat and then taking a gloved hand and using my finger to, you know, mark out all those details and smooth it out. Wetting the glove also helps. Once again, the body was a lot more simple. I just gave that a good coat of ganache, took my acetate smoother and scraped all the excess off. Then you just have to pop them aside and let them set up and then we'll get to the next part. Right, now we've let the cakes set up and they are ready to cover. Now I've decided to use modelling chocolate, which I do recommend because there's going to be a lot of blending of seams and manipulating of faces and that sort of thing. Before I begin anything with my little dragon head, I've actually added just a bit of modelling chocolate underneath his head to fill it out a bit and make sure that it's raised. Don't worry too much about how it looks at this stage. Once it's covered, you won't notice. So to start with our little dragon's face, I actually just wanted to build up the muzzle area just a little bit more. So I've just added a little bit of modeling chocolate to that area. So now to cover my little dragon's face. I've taken some light green modeling chocolate, which I firstly roll out, and then I've taken an animal skin impression mat and I've impressed that over that modeling chocolate. Now you're gonna lose some of the impression as we work away, but a lot of it will stay. I then spritz his face with a bit of water and then I cover his face with that modelling chocolate. I make sure that I go in and smooth out where all the landmarks that we made underneath the modelling chocolate are on the cake. I cut the excess off, making sure I leave a slight border so we can push that underneath. Now using a combination of my fingers and modelling tools, I go in and define those areas, the landmarks underneath the modelling chocolate that we made earlier on. Don't worry too much if you get some ganache on the modelling chocolate. We're going to be colouring this little guy later, so you won't really see it. Okay, then I want to go ahead and start working on his eyes. To make his eyes, I've taken two pieces of modelling chocolate rolled into sort of rounded almond shapes and I pop those on either side of his head where I want his eyes to be. I take my modeling tool and I just make an arched line through the center of that eye. You can already see it coming together at this stage. Once you have that perfected, just go ahead and put another little line underneath of that line and another little line on top of that line. Not quite as deep though. One tool I find really handy with tidying up rougher edges is just a slightly damp, soft paintbrush. The next thing we're going to do is add the eyelids, firstly working on the lower eyelid. I just take a piece of green modelling chocolate that I've rolled out and tapered at either end, not too much, and then I line the underneath of his eye with that. Using my modelling tool, I just blend that all in until I'm happy with how it looks. For the top eyelid, you want to take a piece that's the same shape but slightly larger and wrap that around the top of the eye. Once again, blending that in with a modelling tool until you're happy with how it looks. I also just added a little bit of texture with my modelling tool onto the top eyelids. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the open part, the bottom part of his mouth. So basically what I've done is taken a giant chunk of modelling chocolate that's sort of an arched shape and with the flatter end, I'm pushing that up underneath the muzzle area. I blend that into the already existing part of the mouth. And then just start pinching it outwards and shaping it into the same shape that I have on my reference photo. I cut bits off and thin parts out and shorten parts and lengthen parts until I'm happy with how it looks. There's really no rule of thumb here. You just have to look at your reference picture and keep working until you've got the right shape. I also go ahead and blend the underneath of the lower part of the mouth to the neck area and add any extra laugh lines or anything else that's going to accentuate that laugh with your modeling tool. To make the little nostrils, I've just made sure I've marked where the center of that muzzle area is 
and then either side put a little dot where I'm going to place some extra modeling chocolate. I'll roll two little balls of modeling chocolate and put one ball on each of those little dots. I then take a ball tool silicon shaper and just indent inside those balls. Super simple. Now I'm gonna make like a little crest on the top of his head. I take some green modeling chocolate that I've rolled into like a tapered snake and I flatten out one end and leave the other side thicker. I take my modeling tool and just make little divots along the thinned out area. I cut that to size and with a little bit of water attach that to the center of his head with the thinner part at the front. Now let's move on to working on the baldy. Now the body is super, super simple. So once again, I'm just rolling out some green modeling chocolate, giving that body a spritz with some water, and then I'm just covering it with the modeling chocolate I just rolled out. Smooth that modeling chocolate over the body, cutting off any excess. And once again, just leaving a little bit so we can tuck it underneath. Now once the body's covered, you want to go in and just make a light mark where the center of that belly is. And to make the scale texture around the side of the body, I'm actually going to use a chisel shaped silicon shaping tool. So with that tool, I just go in and start making indents, sort of like an upside down V shape, all the way around the outside of the body. Once all the outer scales are done, we're gonna move into the center of the body, the little belly. And to do the little belly, firstly, I'm going to run a line down the center of the belly. It's actually slightly off center with this guy because the whole body is slightly off center. Just adds a little more character. So I mark that line down the center, and then I take sort of a round silicon shaping tool and make sort of breastplate marks all the way down the belly. Once that's done, I smooth it out a little bit and then take a pointed silicon tool and just make some lines and marks through each of the breastplate to give it a bit more texture. And that's it, that's the body done. Told you that was easy. Now let the fun begin. It's time to attach our head to the body. So firstly, I place the body where I want it to be on the board, making sure I have enough room for the legs and the tail. I then flatten out the modeling chocolate a little bit that's at the top of the body so that I've got somewhere to rest the head. I place the head on top and just slightly push it down into the body. Now right now it's looking pretty separated and that's not what we want. So I just take a bit of modeling chocolate and create a neck. I just build the modeling chocolate up from underneath the cheeks to around about the shoulder. Once again, this is where modeling chocolate is amazing because I'm able to blend it in and make it all look seamless. Okay, to make the little dragon's arms, what I've done is taken a piece of the green modeling chocolate and I've rolled it into a log. I've made one end of the log into a bit of a ball shape where his hand will be. And then I've tapered that log from thin to thick, thin starting where the wrist of the arm would be, moving upwards into a thicker uh, bicep. Once I've done that, I flatten out the ball area to get ready to make it into a hand. I then give the arm a little bit of a bend because I want it bent over onto his belly. Once that's done, I take my craft knife and I make four slits into the bald area that is now flattened out. And this will make our fingers. With my fingers, I start pinching around where I've made those cuts to round them all out, smooth them all out and make them look like little fingers. And then to finish the arm and the hand off, I use my impression mat and just give it a little bit of texture. To attach the arm, I just place it at the top of the body area, just where the shoulder would be. And I use a modeling tool to smooth some chocolate into the rest of the body and make it seamless. Of course, I went ahead and did that on the other side also. The legs are very similar to the hands. Once again, I've taken a log of modeling chocolate and I've rolled it out into a log. I balled one end, but I made it a little bit more pronounced so that we see the back of the foot and the front of the foot. And it's quite a lot shorter and stubbier. 
I flatten out where the foot will be and then I make four little slits with my craft knife for where the toes are going. Once again, I use my fingers to round out those little toes and I use my sugar shaper tool to make little grooves under the toes so that they look a little bit more realistic because we're going to be seeing the bottom of the feet, not so much the top. I slightly bend over the top of the toes also. I then take another silicon shaper tool and just make some marks on the bottom of the foot for some texture. Once again, using a modeling tool, I just attach the legs to the side of the body and smooth them on with that modeling tool, making them seamless. The texture I've used on the legs is the same as I used on the sides of the belly. So I've just taken my chisel tool once again and made little V's all the way down for scales. And of course, did that twice. The tail is just a very tapered long snake of modeling chocolate. I've pinched the center upwards to make a ridge. And then once again, I took my chisel modeling tool to make those V-shaped scales again. Once they were done, I just made indents along the ridge in the center of the tail and pinched them up a little bit. To attach the tail, once again, exactly the same as the arms and the legs, I just tucked it under his little bottom, used a silicon tool to blend it in so it was seamless, and then just folded it up on top of his body to where I think it looked cute. Now, silly me forgot to film putting the little horns on the nose and the top of the head, but for that I just use tiny little teardrop shapes of white modeling chocolate, pop them into place where I wanted them to go, and then just rolled out a long, thin snake of the green modeling chocolate and wrapped that around the base of all the little horns. Now, making the ears was a little bit of a freehand moment. I just looked at the picture of the ears on my reference photo took some of that green modeling chocolate and laid it out flat and then just cut a general shape of what I wanted the ears to be. I used my modeling tool to make ridges on the outside of the ears and a couple through the center. Flattened out in between those ridges. And then where the flattened areas were, I just pushed it inwards a little bit with my finger so that it was more indented around the edges of the ears. I made a few little marks with my modeling tool on the inside of the ear just to give it a little bit of texture. Attaching the ears was a little bit more of a challenge because they were so big and it's modeling chocolate and it gets quite soft as you're working with it. However, I did manage in the end, it was quite simple when I figured it out. I attached the ears in the same way that I attached all the other appendages. I just placed it against the side of the head, use my modeling tool to smooth out the chocolate, so blending the chocolate from the ear into the chocolate from the head. I then just placed some plastic wrap underneath the ear while it's set up. And that was that, his ears were done. Okay, the next thing I've decided to make is the wings because I wanna set them aside to dry just a little bit before I attach them. To make the wings, I used an almost identical process to what I used for the ears. I just made them slightly smaller and a bit more pointed at one end. Once the ears are done, just pop them aside, like I said, to dry for a moment. Now it's time to color this little guy. I opted to use some watered down airbrush color. I ended up using some green, some ivory and some yellow. And then I layered some white over top later on. I also went along with a damp, clean cloth and wiped off excess when I thought there was just a bit too much. Now, for his mouth, I unfortunately rushed a little bit, which made this process a tad more difficult than it should have been. So I would recommend that you let your paintwork dry completely before moving on to this part, not like me. I rolled out a piece of black fondant very thinly and lined the inside of his mouth with the fondant. I then cut around the outline of the inside of the mouth, removing the excess fondant. This is where I went into trouble because the paint was a bit tacky. The fondant did stick a little bit more than I would have wanted it to, but I managed to clean it up pretty well. I just smoothed that down with my sugar shapers and a paintbrush. For the tongue, I shaped some pink modeling chocolate into a bit of a blunt triangle with a very wide bottom. I pop that into his mouth and attach it more underneath than on the top. I then just shaped that the way I wanted it to be. I wanted the little tip of the tongue to be up and put a line down the center of the tongue with a sugar shaper tool. Now at this stage, off camera, I went and just covered the board with a very roughly draped purple fondant. You need this on before you put the wings on, of course, which is the next step. 
I added a little bit of edible glitter to those wings before I attached them and then just attach them to the side of the body with a little bit of water. And that was it, our happy little dinosaur was all done. Well guys, thank you so much for keeping me company again this week. I hope that you're all well and looking after yourself and being kind to one another. I also hope that this video brought you a little bit of cheer in this crazy, crazy world we're in at the moment. My most important tips for these uncertain times are, number one, wash your hands. They're clean, I promise. Wear gloves when you're using food coloring. And stay as positive as humanly possible. This will pass and we all just have to stay strong. I hope this video brought you at least a little bit of cheer while many of you are stuck at home. And maybe now that you've got all this extra time on your hands, you could really go and get your cake on. I'll see you next time, guys. Stay safe. Bye.